low battery. Okay, great. That was really helpful. I will give you this one. Okay, so Luigi here, which is the person that actually does all the uh, international work, while people think I do it, but it's actually in the games, uh, he'll talk about uh, translations and digital translation and stuff. So, hello everyone. Uh, yeah. So, many of you already know me, but just to say a few things. Uh, in the, my work time, I work as a quality engineer in, the, in Red Hat in the OpenStack team, so something completely different, still open source team, so it's, it's fine and nice, and it's good to have a context switch. But on the other side, in my free time, and even before joining Red Hat, I, I, I was and I am a kind of KDE, part of the KDE community, so KDE contributor, starting with a client translation team. Um, and uh, since 2005, doing random contribution to various projects. Uh, Popular World was one of the, the first big ones. Um, and now I'm mostly helping out. I'm still continuing to do Italian uh, translations and doing the proxy for few translators. Uh, but I'm mostly helping out with the internationalization and documentation infrastructure and code is related to that. And then maintaining part of the uh, documentation to chain. So especially KDO tools and KDO Center and uh, unfortunately sometimes so something I would like to do but I have no time yet is doing some probably quality assurance but that's another totally different story. Going to the topic, so we're going to see a few how the translation and the documentation are structured, some general idea of how it's working and with links if you want to go to check later how it's working to more detailed information and more important, what I want to show are some challenges that we're facing right now, or at least what I see from my point of view, and things that can be improved. Um, just to start, the detailed explanation about the uh, technical details on the old uh, internationalization um, chain uh, are explained in a nice page on tech base, but a few things I'd like to uh, highlight is that we have five-ish uh, internationalization branches. Uh, you can find the, the name. The, those are the, the name of the directories on, app, on some version because translation are still there for some uh, good reasons, uh, especially related to the work that we need to do. So we, when you do maintenance work and you need to touch all the translation for all languages, you don't have, want to have uh, translation split into different repositories. No, <laughs> simply no. Um, and it does not impact developers, so it should be still fine. Uh, as you can see from the name, uh, the names, uh, the, uh, the first one usually is, is the one that tracks the most uh, updated um, development thing. Uh, the stable branch tracks something related to stable branch for framework 5 things and so on. And the exception is the last branch, which is the special branch created especially for the LPS of Plasma and probably we're going to have one. It will be probably replaced with the new uh, Plasma LTS. Even if there is going to be a bit of overlap, uh, we should be able to just remove the old translations and just do bug fixes from them. Uh, this is to give you for a bit more in in details on what track uh, which uh, Git branch, and as you can see, the, the meaning of trunk and stable depends on really on the context on what we are talking. So, for example, in the case of frameworks, every repository which is part of frameworks, uh, the master branch of all the repositories which are part of frameworks are uh, tracked by trunk L10 and KF5, and the other the other branches are. Uh, the other 18 and branches are not defined for frameworks because a framework is branchless. Um, KD applications is a more complicated one, so uh, usually trunk and stable uh, trunk master and right now application 1708. Uh, depending on the if the application is still based on KDX4 or if it's based on frameworks, then uh, we could have those two, or the, the frameworks one. In case of Plasma, uh, master, uh, it's tracked by trunk, uh, stable 
attracts plasma 5.10 right now, and the LTS is plasma 5.8. And I just took a random example of another project, like K Photo Album, which has the master branch started by uh, Trunk L10 and K5, and there is still an old stable branch on 4.7. There are a few applications which are this, this stable. We are trying to phase out the old KDBs for branches, so for obvious reasons. Uh, where are the, the all these information? Where are they defined? So the, the the source of truth should be the, the repo metadata repository, but we have those information duplicated also in translation branches. Uh, this is for historical reasons. Uh, it seems at some point, and it still happens that sometimes people forget to update the translation branches, so some strange things can happen, and so we. Uh, can separate definition and we manually run it. Of course, this is not efficient at all, and we want to remove it and have just one source of truth, but it's not like something that you just snap your fingers and you do it, so we need to consider um, the, the cases and check if things are not going to break, uh, if something wrong happens. Um, the, the interesting thing about the, uh, okay, you can just clone the repository, there is a new project done by Arm to get the information from the API. Uh, the information there I use it to generate KD projects.xml. If you heard about that, it's still used in the infrastructure around by a few scripts, but the idea is to uh, port away from that. And uh, most importantly, the information is the themselves are in files called i18n.json for each project. There are some in some cases, there are some defaults, um, and you can see uh, an example of the definition, just a JSON file. The only exception is that the Plasma LTS repository is not tracked there, it's kind of special, special exception, so you won't find that in there, but it's, it, it exists and it works. Or so the, the Plasma team should, should, should can confirm that. And few data updated from yesterday, just to give you some numbers. Um, you can go and see the, the updated one. Uh, the trunk uh, frameworks bench tracks like more than uh, 160,000 uh, UI strings, which are usually smaller ones, but sometimes you have like long description, complex text, so, and more 15 languages are over 90%. And that's important because trying, even if we have a lot of legacy and some things are not so active anymore, but we still, uh, uh, the fact that those branches are so, uh, uh, there are many languages with a high percentage, um, it, it's good, it means that it, there is still some work there. And more important, we have like more than 16,000 uh, uh, of documentation strings, and those are really, really huge. Uh, it can be like a paragraph for section, it's, it's quite huge. And still we have nine languages which, has, which have more than 75%. And to give you a comparison on the old stable KPs for branch, we have still quite a few strings, almost uh, 50,000 UI strings. Of course there is a lot of duplication, but uh, you can see the percentage there is still higher because there are many things which are not if they are still in that branch, it means that they didn't move too much. Uh, so, um, but it, it's a huge amount of, uh, of, of strings. And uh, the interesting thing is that uh, everything is based on get text, even what is not natively based on get text. Um, get text is basically the mostly used format in the GNU world and GNU Linux world. Uh, there are a few projects we are not using it, but mostly uh, everything when you, when you see a file.io, it's, it's a good text file. It's a simple text format with few, um, you, you, can have, you can have few headers, few um, metadata attached to each screen. Um, not going into the details, but for example, we are able to handle also QT, the, 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 the native format of Qt, uh, the PS files with some magic. Uh, we can handle the translation of desktop files and desktop-like files, uh, JSON files for plugins, upstream files, and documentation for, for uh, coming from docbook. But we will see it later. Um, one thing I'd like to mention is that few teams are using a tool called PO Summit 
And it's really interesting because, uh, as I mentioned previously, we had some duplications. So you can expect that, for example, uh, for Plasma, there are many, many strings in common between uh, master and Plasma 5.10 correctly. There are things changed, but like more, I, I don't have a precise number, but I would guess like more than 70% of messages are the same, even more. And this interesting tool allow, basically takes all the same message catalog, the same PO file for all branches, and it, con it creates a consolidated file with all the strings for all branches, from all branches, which is nice. And basically, my personal experience is that I couldn't manage the entire team without that. No way. Uh, you don't lose translations, basically. You, you, the only thing is that it's not fully integrated with our infrastructure. Uh, the basic operation that you need to do, there are, are three operations, one is the gate gathering, and uh, this is done basically by Chaslo every day. Uh, after the script it finishes its run, when the strings are, are clean, uh, you need to take the new translation templates, the basic, the YMP, uh, YMP templates, and rebuild them. The merge operation, and this is on the, this should be done by each translation team. So take the new templates and uh, generate and merge them with the merge the existing translation with the new templates. And finally, there is a scatter. So take the updated document uh, translation in the uh, in the summit branch and push them to the corresponding branches. And this is also something that each translation team should do. Uh, so it's not I, totally ideal. Even if it, it gives you a lot of, uh, it, it, uh, from my point of view, that the time you um, spend not uh, checking each branch, uh, it's, it's still uh, more than the time you spend doing the merging and scattering. Uh, on the developer side, uh, the, in the code, the translatable string of the market as such, and the, um, for and this is this works both for the get text translations and the, the one based on the cube system. Uh, in the documentation of the KIPNN framework, um, which provides the get text support, there is a nice programmer guide, uh, which is it, it has content which is specific for uh, that framework. But there are also few interesting suggestions on how to code in a way that you don't. Uh, complicate the life of translators, and in the end, you have a better user interface. So, it's, it, even if it's hidden there, it's, it's more generic and interesting. You, you may see in the code some files called messages.sh. Those, um, those are files that can be run standalone. You can just do like bash messages.sh, uh, but they are used to, uh, they are anyways shell scripts, and they are used to define which files are tracked by. Which get text templates. So, like, take all the files in this directory and uh, track them in this get text template. Uh, there is some magic in place for desktop upstream JSON files. They are handled like directly by the translation scripts. Uh, you may see some other uh, extra messages or XML messages. They are used to um, um, manage the desktop like files and translation from uh, my types. Uh, the, I already I think I already mentioned it at least once. Uh, Scripty is the collection of script. Uh, I, I don't know the, the origin of the name, but, but basically it's a collection of script. So, and which does the magic every night during the European night. Um, in, it runs on all branches. So, and for each branch, get all the string from all repositories, update the get text templates, merge the existing translation with the new templates. And then, and also it has the logic to do something with desktop JSON upstream files, and then it does the uh, injection of the changes from the desktop JSON upstream files into the uh, various uh, repositories back. So, uh, and this is happens every night. Uh, we recently switched to a new machine, which is more powerful. So it's uh, it, it, uh, at some point it was taking like. Uh, nine ten hours. I think now it's it's like six. No, it's even less. Five hours, six hours. It's really, really the, the the biggest issue with Scripty and the speed is like that it's IO bounded, heavily IO bounded. So uh, if if we uh, 
probably the new system is really more um, is sparser from that point of view. The translation for the wheat is a different story, uh, especially for user base because some teams move at the home page and sometimes the documentation there. Uh, the the, the wikis are translated directly online. There is an extension uh, for MediaWiki which uh, allows you to translate, to mark some uh, part of not translatable and translate them on, 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 uh, on there, directly there. You can export and import the translation as GIF text but not as a template. And it's kind of, uh, so from my personal point of view, in the past there was a disconnection between wiki translators and the rest of the translation team. So the, they, in some cases, they didn't talk to each other. I found translation of Italian pages and never seen the communication from the person on the Italian translation list, even just to coordinate. What are the challenges? You may have already uh, understand that there are some issues and things that can be improved. Uh, scripting itself, uh, it's, we, we would need more flexibility. So whenever you need to add support for the automatic extraction of a new format, which is not one of the existing one, and even when the support for JSON, for example, had to be added or upstream, which are the last extra things that were added, it requires some other changes, and that's not, of course, good in the long term, even in the short term. Um, the wiki translations, it would be good, many teams already expressing the, 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 the need to have them in the workflow and technically it's not so difficult. We would just need the extension, the media wiki extension to implement the export to get text templates. Um, of course, uh, that means that uh, if implemented we will need to add a custom format to the scripting, which goes back to the previous point. And uh, that can be complicated. Um, but in general, the, the extraction process is a bit complicated because uh, you, you saw that we have this in hybrid model. You have to do explicit definition, uh, explicit uh, definition for the messages in the code through the messages of the sage. You have to say, I want to translate this here. And there is some implicit, um, implicit rules for some other files. So it's kind of why. And this is not nice from a uh, again from a maintenance point of view. So the, the idea would be, for example, a possible idea would be to move to a new program, which pluggable backends to extract, merge back the translation for various types of file. So instead of having messages.exchange file, you would have these magic things that you call to our in a repository, it takes a configuration file and do the magic for all the types defined there. Basically it's moving to a declarative uh, definition of what is translatable and what not. And that will have also release scripts because now there is a lot of guessing that the release script needs to do to understand what to include in a tarball, but that would simplify things a lot. And that brings to uh, the scary point, so rewrite scripting, which is something you don't want to do in you know, just one shot. Uh, it's really an ambitious goal because the, uh, so the, the problem that I explained in the previous slide would be the first step. It can be done independently and then plug it into and remove and clean up some part of scripting. Uh, because right now, the things I didn't say, say is that script is a collection, and I'm not kidding about of bash, Python, Bird, and C++ programs altogether. That's why adding things there is not <laughs> the easiest thing you, you, you can do. But no, really? And I don't, maybe, I, I have to recheck, but I, I'm not sure I want to know. <laughs> a possible idea would be to like Python things around Buildbot, which is an engine kind of Jenkins things, but it's written in Python to, to write like automation steps. Uh, just like that. Of, of course, a lot of effort is required, and you want, don't want to do like everything in one shot. And another thing which is a bit painful, a bit less than the others, uh, because there are less involved, but still, um, when the team uh, translates the documentation, so script does the magic and does the from doc hook to um, PO files, but then the, the, the part where you take the PO files, the translate the translation in get text format and regenerate the doc hook, it's something that each team needs to do, is the regeneration of the documentation. The automation is still possible, but there are a few corner cases, so I didn't investigate too much, even when I do regenerate uh, manually if there are some uh, Templates which are not totally updated, there could be some English translation that's sleeping, so something that needs to be redone. That's a good side task because it, 
it's not part of the other bigger changes. And sometimes uh, this is connected to so some uh, translations are lost in, in branches because sometimes translators are just translating trans or sometimes just unstable and they don't report that the, the move the translation or apply the translation to the other branches. Most of the teams are, are good in this, but sometimes we can miss something and something could be the solution. I would prefer at some point that everyone would be moving into something, but we need to augment the other steps that we have seen before. And, okay, I need to hurry up a bit. Uh, our translation website is made of aging PHP code. It has a resource handy indexing system, and that's why the translation templates on Tuesday morning or Wednesday morning arrives later. Um, there is no reservation system, and that's the reason why you have at some point in five or six different reservation systems for each translation teams to define which, which, uh, um, which translator is working on which stream. Uh, it was, I tried to solve this with a summer probe two or three day, years ago, but at some point, uh, I think that my proposal at this point would be just to switch to Dummet Lies, which is the uh, GNOME translation website. It is written in Django, Python, and it should be easy to adapt, easy to, adapt to our, easier than rewriting everything from scratch. Uh, I even tried to install it, and it should be quite possible, but again, uh, many powers. And online translations, that's another pain point. Proposed many times, not, there is no people really against it. Uh, but uh, it's not a solution for social issues like that. Uh, the maintainer is not letting me go in with my proposed translation. But it's still, um, it needs to implement a few uh, points that, that this is an email from two years ago. There was, I think, the last week flying about this. Uh, basically, it shouldn't, the, the tool shouldn't go in the way of when people do, do, do migration or changes in the uh, directly in the repository for translations. And again, uh, there was some volunteers that was trying to do a proof of concept, but I didn't hear back from them. And documentation. Um, Link is a topic which is linked to that, at least for, because we have translation for documentation, but the documentation itself, uh, the, the team, uh, when I started contributing to KDE, the team was really big and um, uh, producing a lot of things, and uh, the, even there were even two Academy Awards in different times, so really long history nowadays, not so many contributors, unfortunately. Uh, it's good still that few, uh, um, in few projects, I think, uh, but let's not go and mention them, but a few projects, the, the developers still maintain the documentation uh, and that's good. But updates are still coming. If you check for the Plasma frameworks and application, at least if you see the updates date uh, in the documentation, they are not so bad. So even with the lack of manpower, the, the, the few people that are doing a good job, but still. Um, the, the documentation is mostly written in Docbook. Uh, which is an XML format, I expect you should know, but just in case. Uh, script does the magic, extracting the, uh, the, the PLX templates using XML to port, and then translator, as I explained before, regenerate the documentation for each track and branch. The website, uh, it's highly the front end, uh, because I'm not a web developer, but the uh, the, the website itself is statically generated periodically, and the engine which uh, regenerates it and the searching search engine were written last year. I, I wrote, wrote them and they are working, so I just need someone to <laughs> clean up the, the website. The challenges on, on, on this side uh, allow people to use non docu Even if I'm not sure it will increase the number of documentation. Too much, but still, uh, even in many other open source projects, people are moving away from Docbook. So, a possible uh, an alternative should be uh, nice. My proposal is ASCII doc because it's closer to Docbook. It should be easier to uh, just have a few steps for, to convert them to Docbook and reuse the existing to chain because you don't want to change your to chain in just one shot. And uh, but even in this case, the working prototypes still need to be implemented. ASCII doc is another like uh, text-based format like Markdown or RST and other like this. Uh, 
we have another challenge which is coming, uh, the regression to the new license, which is totally fine. The new license is fine. There was a discussion about changing to Creative Commons 4 um, for the grant, uh, new FDL license. It's totally fine. It's totally nice, but I fear that if we uh, switch to new documents, we need to do a lot of work to relicense the old documentation if we want to still use it and not lose it on, on time. So someone needs to do it, and it will be long and painful, but yeah, not much to do. And the website, as I mentioned before, the backend was rewritten. Uh, we need to do the front end and then something nice. Uh, something like that in one pages would be nice, where you can set like the language and the, uh, um, the different uh, uh, versions on the fly. Uh, it needs such changes in the documentation, in generation of the documentation too, but that's things I'd like to have. And uh, even if the backends allow to keep the allows to keep this um, older branches, like old version of Plasma, old version of application, uh, that piece of code is missing. So there was one reason for writing the, the script, but I stop it at that point. And uh, I think more or less we're fine and we have some time for some questions. Those are the coordinates in case you want to contact the team, uh, both translation team and documentation team, or both, um, yeah, both on the um, mailing list and the IRC channels. And if you have any questions, and here, and we have a buff for translator buff on Monday, don't remember the time, in case you are interested. And if you have questions. Seems no questions. So, thanks all.